Abilene Today. Good Thursday morning to you. I'm Katie Thompson. And I'm John Nolan. Here in Abilene Today, we have top stories in weather every 10 minutes. Two people went to the hospital early this morning after their car ran into a parked truck in West Abilene. It happened just after midnight near the intersection of Bishop Road and Health Center Drive. Police say the vehicle was traveling at a high rate of speed when the driver failed to negotiate a turn in the road, then striking a parked pickup truck. There was one backseat passenger in the truck who didn't st uh, sustain any injuries. Police are now awaiting the results of blood tests to determine if alcohol was a factor in this crash. An Abilene mother is speaking out saying Facebook removed breastfeeding photos and classified them as pornography. And yesterday, nursing mothers across the country took a stand against a major retailer for a similar reason. Moms from around the country staged nurses at Target stores. The movement was started by a South Texas mother who says she was humiliated by Target employees for breastfeeding her child while shopping. A Target spokesperson says it's their policy to allow breastfeeding in stores. They also offer fitting rooms as a discreet place to nurse. A handful of protesters showed up at Abilene's Target store yesterday morning to participate in a similar nursing. Governor Rick Perry was already pro-life, but now says his stance on abortion has changed. Perry told supporters in Iowa that he no longer supports abortion in cases of rape or incest. He responded to a question from the audience saying that he had undergone a transformation after viewing the film The Gift of Life, which is narrated, narrated by former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee and also talking with a woman who was conceived during a rape. And the latest CNN poll out of Iowa shows another big shift among Republican voters. Just five days before the caucuses, Mitt Romney has taken a lead and Newt Gingrich has taken a fall. Ron Paul is now in second place and Rick Santorum is right there too with growing support. Brian Moore reports from Washington on the countdown to Iowa. And it's 6.02, let's take a look at your top story. A 90-year-old woman was hospitalized last night after hitting a train head-on. It happened around 8.30 on CR 436 near Olden in Eastland County. Police say a 90-year-old woman mistakenly turned onto train tracks thinking it was a road. After driving several yards on the track, she was hit head-on by a train who had slammed on its emergency brakes. Her vehicle was pushed back about 30 yards before coming to a stop. The woman was airlifted to a Fort Worth hospital with a broken leg. And another woman is in critical condition after a 15-vehicle accident shut down Interstate 20 yesterday afternoon. Our Morgan Bond has more on what many are calling the worst accident they've ever seen on Ranger Hill. Abilene has been ranked number one in the nation on a major investment website for the percentage of jobs lost over the past year. And after talking to residents looking for work, it's clear that's no easy task. Activists hoping to find missing teen Haley Dunn will hold a vigil to mark one year since she went missing. The group Hope for Haley will hold a vigil on Saturday, December 17th. Dunn went missing from her Colorado City home December 27th of last year and she hasn't been seen since. The exact time and place of the vigil has not been determined yet, but the group hopes to hold it from 6 to 9 p.m. on the 17th. You'll find more details on the planned vigil at BigCountryHomePage.com. Flames destroyed an Anson business earlier today. Fire crews from Anson and Stamford rushed to the Tiger Pond building on the north side of town just after 11 a.m. Initial reports show that smoke was coming from the attic. Crews tried to put out the fire but couldn't save the building. Tiger Pond was in an old church building across the street from Anson General Hospital. Welcome back. Well, here's a good story for you. Not far from Christmas, two of Santa's reindeer, Comet and Dancer, got loose on an interstate near Houston. Sound unbelievable? Well, imagine being the 911 dispatcher who took the call. Daniela Guzman has the details on this incredible story. KRBC's Katie Thompson is live at the Taylor County Courthouse with the latest in this case. We wrap up this week's testimony still hearing from the prosecution side. The defense is expected for next week, but this trial has the potential to go even longer. That comes after the defense ordered a second testing of Austin David's blood sample. A very emotional day here today in day two of testimony, probably the most emotional coming from the girlfriend of Austin David, 21-year-old Stephanie Molina. Our Katie Thompson is live on the base. Katie, you say it's part of an ongoing effort there. Yeah, it's more of an ongoing effort as from the Air Force as a whole than right here at Dias. In fact, it's important to note out even the top officials here on base don't know exactly how this whole thing will play out in the future. But we do know that out of the 9,000 jobs being cut across the Air Force, 
49 of those positions will be from right here on Dias Air Force Base. Just hours ago at this Enchilada Express, employees were tied up and robbed, and now the owner says they're just trying to come back from the scary experience. Our last driver that took off, you know, noticed two individuals in the alley. Didn't really think much of it because every once in a while, you know, there's people walking dogs. It, it seems like somebody had planned it. The two men who were dressed as military officers came in through this back door and then forced an employee to give them the money. They were all dressed in camo. They had like black boots, you know, camo pants, uh, you know, camo jacket, you know, gloves, uh, you know, ski masks. After bringing the men the money they wanted, they then tied him up with these zip ties. About a brief uh, two minute ordeal um, and they just uh, walked my manager to the you know cash register and made him open it into the cash register. With his hands behind his back, that employee was then forced to dial 911 on this phone with his nose. And this is one of those things of business that you know it's going to happen sooner or later, and it's all about how you try to learn from it, you know how you prevent it. And the employees that were here last night still obviously very shaken up and declined to be on camera. And police are still investigating the incident from Enchilada Express in South Abilene. I'm Katie Thompson, KRBC News. Down one set. Down two set. When the going gets tough, yes, sir. the tough come here to Reality Invasion Boot Camp to see if they're as tough as they act. We're not just, you know, breaking the kids down. We always trying to build the kids back up, instill confidence, instill leadership in them, and make them take responsibility for their actions. The boot camp started in Abilene this past spring and has since seen a 65 percent increase in enrollment. At least 60 plus kids since then. Uh, we've grown from like nearly 20 kids to closer to 80, almost 90 kids. The camp gained heavy criticism when it first started, but for the Kelsey family, it was a perfect opportunity to teach their triplet 12-year-old boys that acting out will get them nowhere. My boys are really good boys, but I want to keep them that way. I want them to be respectful and to be leaders. Of course, with triplets, they argue and fight. The program has not only been recommended by child behavior professionals, but it is now being court mandated for repeat juveniles in Holly. I have seen a difference in the kids, so I'm hoping that this, at the end of all of this, it's going to be a very successful thing. Since the Kelsey boys began camp, the family has seen a world of a difference. They're responsible, they make their bed, they do laundry, they fold, they put up. I think the rest of the parents would pretty much just say it's, it's a good thing.